Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader Review video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Nook Tablet HD+. Plus. This is the first tablet that Barnes & Noble has ever released that is around 9 inches. And they've really increased the resolution from previous iterations of uh, the Nook Tablet. You're looking at 1920 by 1280. That is massive. Yeah, it, it's not too bad. And you're, you're also seeing a dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor in conjunction with one gig of RAM. There's also various storage models that you can buy. You can get either the 16 or 32 gigs and you can increase it further with a micro SD card. Uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and battery life lasts around eight hours or so. So Peter here is going to give you the full 360. I like the look of this Nook HD Plus because it looks like its younger brother or older, I guess the older version, yeah, uh, the Nook tablet. You can see a lot of similarities, and we will get into a full comparison of these two uh, devices in the future video. But just saying, really like the way it's laid out. I like the little chisel, it's very Nook-esque, a little hoop, and the upside down U as Michael continuously refers to it, the end button. You still have that nice uh, hard rubber plastic kind of uh, material going around the bezel. Very nice hard glass screen. It's not flush but it's it almost flush. looks flush it does yeah but it's not quite flush like the amazon kindle fire on the bottom yes indeed you have the nook proprietary jack so we've gone from a micro usb-esque cable to um not sh re really sure what they're calling it at this point but i've just been referring it to as just the nook plug or the nook jack it looks very much like a old apple kind of 18 pin or 19 pin or whatever they had mm -hmm. so that plugs in there uh, you can plug the other end. The other end is standard USB. You can plug that into your uh, computer, your laptop, PC, whatever way you want to charge it. Now, obviously, this does look like the Apple pin connector, but Apple accessories won't work on this. No, it, we tried it on iPhone just because. And uh, size-wise, it did. Cle it, it had clearance in the port, but uh, it did not connect because the pins are different. Yeah, Barnes & Noble is really doing this so they can make more money on their accessories. Yeah, yeah pretty much. SD card slot, I still like how they have expandable memory, so you're not, even if you do buy the 16 gig version of the Nook HD+, Plus, you're not locked into that. Nothing going on on the left, although it's nice and clean looking. On the top, you have 3.5mm headphone jack, volume up and down, and you have a microphone. And you have the power st slash standby button on the right. Status indicator light on the bottom. And for some strange reason, only one speaker on the bottom left, whereas the Nook HD, uh, the Nook HD, which we will show you in another comparison video, actually has stereo speakers and really does not look like the old Nook, uh, the old Nook tablet or the HD Plus. It looks very strange. So, and even the iPad Mini has two speakers now. So, yes, it's, two, weir two. it's weird to see like a higher end device yes, exactly. only have a single speaker. This is the eight gig model of the lower end Nook HD with stereo speakers, and then you have the high end Nook HD Plus, full 32 gigabyte with one single speaker on the back. Kind of a little weird, but it's not the worst thing in the world. You still have the nice embossed uh, N on the back, nice hard rubber backing for very good grip. All in all, I think it's designed very well. I very much like the look of this device. Okay, I mean, we never talked about the weight, but how does it hold up in one hand? It's, not, to not sugarcoat anything, it's, it's a little bit heavy. If I were to hold it here for an extended period of time, say reading a book, it's, it's, it's much heavier than the previous, um, uh, the previous version, which is the Nook tablet. But of course, it is bigger. It's boasting a larger screen. It's boasting uh, just larger internals. It's just more volume all over. But uh, it's not, it's not going to break your arm. All right, let's check out the software experience. So this is the main UI on the Nook tablet HD. As you can see, it's Android-esque. But one of the cool things is that it does go into landscape mode whereas traditional Android tablets normally only work in a portrait mode. So for the sake of this tutorial, we could show you a little bit more clearly everything in landscape mode, so that's the way we're going to keep it. As you can see, here's the main UI. In the past with a Barnes & Noble, say, the Nook Tablet or Nook Color, you had, actually had to press the home button in order to pull that up, but this is always persistent now, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit more effective. Why don't you 
why don't we take a look at everything here? Yes, the N actually just acts as a home button now. So if you're on a different screen, you press the N, it'll go home. Uh, what you see here is you still have your Android-esque drop-down stuff. There we go. <laughs> Uh, so you have the bar at the top that tells you that you're downloading stuff, tells you whose Nook it is. Um, you have quick kind of hotkeys, if it, as it were, uh, Wi-Fi. You can turn off and on at the click of a button, airplane mode, all that stuff. You have this thing that looks exactly like the Amazon carousel. So I'm not, I'm not going to try to hide that. It really looks like the one on the Kindle. Well, it has fire. a little bit more of a 3D sort of view to it, whereas uh, the Kindle is more like... Um, so oh, it's very 2D. All right, all right. So we have all that. You see these little clouds up here. These are actually things, for example, Angry Birds. We downloaded that on our Nook tablet. So what we're going to do is just click that. And what happens is that it gets downloaded to this particular unit from our account. So everything's syncing up at the same time. And actually, while we're doing this, um, and while we download things onto here, all of either units under the same account will have everything synchronized to that at the same time. So, as Michael said, you see all the stuff on the right here that's always there. You can go ahead and click on those to kind of explore what you have. You see here, as the list populates, you have books, magazines, TV, movies you've downloaded, and all that, apps, kids' books. So everything will be uh, revisited here later on in the review, but this is your main library where you'll find all of your content. Apps is your list of, well, apps. Pretty much everything except those two is, pretty, is all stock and Netflix. <laughs> That's what you get on the device. But uh, things can be downloaded off of the Barnes & Noble Nook marketplace. You also have web, and this will take you to your browser. You see we have awesome website pulling up here. <coughs> so we'll explore this a little bit later on as well, just kind of giving you a... Uh, tour of the main page here. You can set up email accounts as you see so fit here. And of course the shop which is very very much redone and actually it doesn't look like this shop goes into landscape mode. So we're going to turn this around portrait and Michael is going to give you a little bit of a tour of the changes you can see. If you ever had a Nook Color, Nook Tablet or any of the, the various models of their Android line you'll say to yourself that this looks different, and it, it really does. I mean, Barnes & Noble has really done a lot in revising the store interface for its Nook HD and HT Plus product line. So it takes a little bit getting used to, but you can see that, you know, you have your books, magazines, movies and TV. Even if you're using an... Okay, in order to get content, you need an American credit card and American billing address. You can get this all from shoppingreaders.com uh, for that to make purchases. The only thing that you can't actually access is videos, um, movies, and TV. You can actually buy it or rent it. You can. But when it comes to actually watching it, you can't. Yeah, so what happens is that we've actually purchased and paid for a full HD rental of a uh, movie. So if you go to libraries and you go down here, you will see in Canada we've purchased this with an American credit card with American address, Battleship. We go to click on that and you're sent to this screen and it no longer says purchase because we've paid for that. If we try to download that, it actually says there's an issue because we're in Canada, or no, pretty much we're outside the US in general. Then we tried to stream it, and it says once playback, you have 24 hours to finish the movie, so we'll say start watching, and it will not let us do that. So what this means is if you live in the US and you try to rent or watch videos while you're traveling, it won't work. You'll pay for them, and once you start watching them, you'll get, like we said, it, like it said there, we had a 24-hour period to finish that movie. Um, that's pretty much it. Then your rental or purchase is uh, paid for. Okay, so when you're in the store, you have the home and back button here. We'll just give you a quick side load in here of what the store used to look like, and you can see the refresh rate on this device is far different. But this is the store on the Nook tablet, the previous models, and the Nook Color. You can see how drastically different it is from the Nook tablet HD here, so there definitely has been quite a bit of upgrades. Yeah, 
So <clears throat> that is a good benchmark. And it's weird that, that that does have... I mean, it's to the naked eye. There's no refresh rate issue. It's no. only because of the camera. But it's interesting to see that the camera is picking yeah. this up perfectly with it's, no... This is the same shot, too. And the screen is definitely a different technology. Yeah. So even... We're going to do, uh, obviously, comparisons with the, this previous product line so you can actually see how content looks head-to-head. -head. So stay tuned to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash goodyreader. Of course, there's a lot of options here um, you have your catalogs you have your newspapers right now it's only American newspapers but if you live in the UK you actually get UK papers you have um, the App Store here now from a reading perspective I couldn't really find Comixology no. Marvel Comics DC Comics or anything like that so it's uh, if you want to buy comics you're relegated to doing business with Barnes and Noble. You can even see that, like Zinio. We search for Zinio, and this is we're searching the entire store. And yeah, nothing shows so up. So Barnes and Noble has a curated shop. So if you want to say uh, get newspapers, magazines. You're not getting them through third parties like Zinio or Press Reader, but you're relegated to getting them exclusively through Barnes and Nobles. Um, also, with uh, apps and such like that, you can't sideload in your own apps. No. Uh, in the past, on the first generation of uh, Nook tablets and Nook colors, the Nook color was able to sideload apps, uh, any APK file, and the Nook tablet very briefly was able to do that. But now, if you were to download an application from the internet via a download uh, APK or you sideload in apps, you will not be, you'll be able to get to the download screen, but it will not let you install them because you, every Nook tablet HD and uh, HD Plus, such as these two, are now blocked from downloading any apps from unknown sources, meaning that when Michael was trying to show you Press Reader and Comics and Zinio, if they're not on the market, you can't get them. Yeah, and um, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Of course, you can see that there's actually no dedicated comics category, but Barnes & Noble has roughly about a 1,000 uh, plus graphic novels. They don't sell single issues. You're relegated to just graphic novels. So I could, uh, I've done a search here called Marvel, and as you can see, that there's lots of things showing up you know, including non-Marvel comics, but we could refine our search, right? Absolutely. If you go refine, you can actually search for Marvel under apps, books, magazines, or any anything of the sort. And you will see here, you don't have a dedicated Marvel app. These are the apps that show up when you search for Marvel. Yeah. So there is a lot of like functionality to refine your searches which is cool especially if you're looking for like free titles or if you're looking for tv episodes or you know best sellers and things like that so um, the market is pretty intuitive to like find what you want it just um it's hard to find dedicated apps that take you away from making purchases from barnes and noble so We've looked at a number of the things here. Let's take a look at, you know, ebooks and uh, the magazine and newspaper experience. So we're going to flip this into landscape mode so we can zoom in a little bit better. Okay, so here's a Marvel comic app. And as you can see, there's actually two pages here. You can pinch and zoom. Kind of have um, an animated page, like. animated page turns, but you can see that it's uh, a little bit different than the way other comics do it. Like you're peeking, but it's like translucent. Yeah, that's to not block what's on. What well, would we'll see? This would be usually blocking whatever's on this page as you're peeking, but this way you can kind of get the full experience until you're done making your page turn. Yeah, I think that was kind of cool. I totally agree. So you can get 
sort of focus on specific panels and things like that. Uh, comics, for the most part, are, are always best read in, you know, portrait mode, but um, there's really no huge differences here at all. Click here, you can kind of see all the different panels in the books. This is a quick navigate, so you can go to the cover. Not many spaces you can navigate to in this particular book. Yeah. So, not too bad. Uh, the next thing I want to take a look at is, let's click on our library here. We'll look at an ebook. See, because we have a, uh, a two column split, we're not able to do uh, the page turn things, but we have a number of options here. So you have line spacing options. Everything changes live, but you are left with this full screen kind of refresh. You have about eight different font sizes, so you can adjust those. And for the most part, they turn live, they change live. Margins. A number of themes. So you can go blackout, gray, slight off-white, brown, and I guess kind of a cream and you also have um, I would say eight or nine different font styles and if you ever mess up of course you can hit like publishers default exactly so go back to the way that they attended it to be read yeah um, clicking here you actually see a number of options <laughs> you can search for words or phrases within a book You can see, you can like it on Facebook, you can click recommend, and then share it via Twitter and things like that. Most of the tablets these days offer links to various services. You also have highlights. See, if you go back to it, your highlight is still there. Go to individual, and we can go add note. Create a note. So you'll see that you have a little note in the corner, so when you're going through your book, or maybe you've forgotten what's uh, going on, Tap the highlight. You can do a couple different colors. Nothing too crazy. Still, I kind of like the it's way that nice. that's presented. I do like that. Yeah. I, I think with like other tablets, once you kind of highlight a color, that's it. There's a couple tablets like the iPad Mini and the Kobo Arc that have uh, colors. But yeah, this one's actually um, allowing you to do various options on that particular Including one. Including so. editing the note. So there you go. You don't actually have to go to your note in order to edit it. <clears throat> You also have share quote, kind of like the same thing. It was a hot key down there that shares it to Facebook and Twitter and all that. Look up gives you a dictionary definition. You'll need to download one of the free dictionaries or use Google or Wikipedia. So here is uh, the English dictionary we'll download there. And you can also see a few other options here. Enable animation on page turns. And <laughs> it's zeroed in out of the book. There you go. So by default, it's turned off, but you saw that there we hit an option that allowed you to do it. Now we have our dictionary definitions because uh, we had downloaded it. You'll see right here. And you can also look via Google and Wikipedia, of course. Last thing on the list of long presses is find in books. So if there's a particular person or term, you can kind of find that anywhere in the book. Of course, you can side load in your own books as well as um, make uh, copy ebooks that you've uh, purchased from other ebook stores. And this is because it's compatible with Adobe Digital Editions. So you can authorize this device to be like the same as your main Adobe Digital Editions account on your PC. So that's uh, good to know. Now, with this carousel, is am I locked into it or can I play around and edit it a bit? What you can do is find something like Evernote, press and hold. And then you can drag it down here or drag it from, oops, or drag it from, Duh. No. There we go. If you hold it a little too long, you go into the right-click 
uh, kind of menu. So you can drag it from page to page, much like uh, Android is laid out for the most part. So no, you're not necessarily locked into the carousel up top. You can take things out of it. Swell. So magazines is also something. And these are magazines purchased, you know, from Barnes & Noble. See, oh. you kind of get the, the persistent favorite. peaking. Yeah, <laughs> the peaking. And this is article view. So you can see that. We've zeroed in on this one particular article instead of having it full screen. And that's virtually unreadable. So you can definitely go in there and, oops, we've gone back. You can definitely go in there, go in there and choose article view so you can get a closer look at what uh, exactly the article is about. Makes it a little easier to read because you're not having to like pinch and zoom. Yeah. Like in here, it's sort of like, all right, I want to read this article. Oh, I'm actually clicking pages yeah. and things like that. And you got to find that sweet spot. If you use article view, it just kind of conforms everything to the... To, the, to a good reading level. Yeah, so it, it kind of really seems like um, a lot of the content from Barnes & Noble has all these features, which I kind of like. Kind of double tapping takes you out. And then if you double tap again, it kind of brings you in on the thing. So I would probably recommend article view. But again, you're not like locked into specific things. If you click those buttons, you see the full pages in every book. So if you want to go to particular articles, this is probably like the best way to do it without having to churn like 10 pages like in a row. Which you can't do in a real magazine. Yeah, exactly. You can see here table of contents, a little bit of a different, different uh, way to present it. Yeah, if you click here, small. you see the, some of the details. Let's put it in portrait mode for a while. Uh, you know, free trials. You could read reviews and things like that. Nothing happens on the long presses. <coughs> okay, now... What's this? It's a little picture of like an X or of a pair of scissors. What this actually does is this allows you to make scrapbooks based on like articles um, in uh, magazines. So you can see that we have a goody reader scrapbook. So we're going to save this page to our scrapbook. Now if we go back to our library You see here that we actually have my scrapbook. And these are two different things that we've taken. And animated page turns and everything. Fairly cool. And you can see some of the different things that we have here. You can hit here and get a bit of a, a different view. Specifically, we have a, like a lot of content. So little things like that have really uh, upped its game here. This is the Wall Street Journal. And this obviously was purchased from the Barnes & Noble market. Yeah. So, very easy to read. So you can do the same kind of book interactions, add notes and highlights, all kind of the same stuff. Yeah, this is almost like an e-book in the, in the respects that Anything that we just showed you in the book reading experience could be applied to like newspapers. Of course, search for words and phrases. So this is definitely not the newspaper that you grew up with. It's a uh, very different. Of course, you can go back to the info and find out all about that. And you can see all the other content here. And if you go down to the bottom here, you will see these uh, are things we tried to download from our app store. This is the Goody Reader App Store client. 
uh, my files will be stuff you've either loaded with your SD card, loaded onto the device, or downloaded. Yeah, like PDFs, <laughs> documents, movies, music, all that stuff. Exactly. And we tried to download this, and you either get the Nook cannot read this file, unsupported format, or you are blocked from downloading things from outside sources. So that's what that is. Um, too true, too true. Um, one of the things that the Nook has done really well is being able to establish customer profiles. Yeah, so what you want to do there is click on the little icon you have on the top left. And you see here we have a profile for just a general one, uh, one for Goody Reader. We're just testing this out. What you can do is actually add a profile. So say you have a child and you have maybe a young girl and her name, I don't know, Amy, and she's whatever that is, 2007, and you want to set certain uh, boundaries so she can read her children's books and not have access to the internet where she might see things that she's not allowed yeah, to. Yeah, so you could take off Browse Shop so she can't actually make any purchases. You can maybe... Browse the web is turned off, so you maybe don't want that on because then she will not... It said right... Actually, right there, it uh, pops up and says, this will give your child the ability to browse the entire web, so... Maybe you want to not allow that just in case you go to a website. You can also make sure that ratings, that she can only watch things that are like PG. So you can go G or PG there, so she'll have only access to, say, Disney movies and such. Then you choose some stuff like that what she likes to do. So if she's into uh, fascinating facts and fantasy books, then you choose those and uh, certain things will be recommended to her. So sure. you can choose some things that Barnes Noble recommends. Books about dolphins and stuff. And then what you've done is actually created Amy's Nook. And you created her own profile. And then you see a lot of the default stuff went away. So you just have library and apps. Because you don't want her browsing the web. So there isn't web anymore. You can't go to the shop and rack up the credit card bills. So you're left with just the stuff you're allowing. Yeah, like the music player and exactly. like Angry Birds. I think that's a really good feature to have, especially if you do have kids that occasionally grab your tablet from you. Yeah. So it's a it's a cool little tablet. There's there's lots here to do. Um, the final thing that I want to do is uh, show you how video looks. Now, obviously, we can't um, get video or music from. Barnes and Noble, but yeah. that's not stopping us from getting Netflix. Netflix will always work. Good old Netflix. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's as loud as it goes. We'll let you hear this for a sec. Not the loudest tablet we've heard so far. No. Definitely. It's, um, video quality, especially on Netflix, isn't anything to write home about either. No, no, and it's unfortunate we can't download, well, we can buy and download the HD version of Battleship starring Liam Neeson, but we can't watch it because we're outside of the USA, so we're not even able to uh, really um, experience this in Canada, which is, I think is a major drawback. Final thoughts? Um, all in all... I like the way it looks. I like that if you have children, you're allowed to set them, set boundaries for them. Uh, I really like how they have an SD card. I'm not liking the audio quality, and I absolutely do not like the fact that you are not able to download APK files from outside sources. That, the whole kind of make or break situation, that absolutely 100% breaks it for me. I have this amazing resolution, high build quality, 9-inch uh, Android tablet. And I can't download anything than what is already on the Barnes & Noble Marketplace. And I'm not even able to get all this stuff from the Barnes & Noble Marketplace because we're in Canada. 
So even if I was in the States and like Michael said, you go on vacation, you still can't do all the things. If you, uh, you still can't watch videos and music and all that. So you see here, we had downloaded the Goody Reader App Store, install blocked, and there is no setting to, down, to uh, allow installs from outside sources, and that completely turns me off from this device. If you live in the US or the UK, this tablet's pretty good. Uh, if you live outside the UK, there's a lot of workarounds. Uh, you need a US billing address and credit card, as well as you know uh, a VPN if you actually want to get the videos and stuff like that. Uh, not being able to sideload in your own apps is a, kind of a big deal for me, but I'm used to it with the Barnes & Noble family line. I do like the ability that I could shop for books on Kobo, uh, you know, books on board, smash words and things like that, and actually copy them to my device and actually have access to like the dictionary uh, to be able to make notes, uh, edit the fonts, line spaced in the margins and things like that. Um, being in Canada, I would say that the Danook HD Plus is extremely limiting. If you don't have an American address or billing, uh, you can't even use the device. So uh, in the US, I would you know say that this is a viable alternative to other high resolution tablets like uh, you know the Apple iPad and things like that. There really isn't a lot of nine inch tablets like on the marketplace so there's really not a lot of things to compare it to but this is Barnes & Noble's first large screen tablet it's its first tablet with as high resolution as it's offering and it does offer a lot of content in its stores um, I'm not a huge fan of this you know to be honest but a lot of people would be uh, let's hear your thoughts comment on this video on our YouTube channel youtube.com slash goody reader or leave a, a comment on this a review on our website at goodyreader.com slash blog and uh, for goody reader in a, a, ta a tablet review of the nook HD plus my name is Michael and this is Peter everybody take care <laughs>